À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage du vulcain. Allumage des EAP, décollage. sont normaux. La trajectoire est nominale. Blazing a trail across the equatorial skies, heading east over the Atlantic. We broke the sound barrier after 48 seconds. We are now supersonic. Les paramètres bord sont normaux. La trajectoire est nominale. Everything's going according to plan, he's telling us. And the boosters are doing all the work right now. Those two huge rockets on either side of the main stage. They're providing 90% of our thrust, and they're doing exactly what they say on the tin. They are boosting us away from the gravity of the Please. Earth. It takes an awful lot of firepower to do that. They're burning two tons of propellant a second each. That's La queue de poussée des EAP. That's uh, on average what a car uses in a year. Séparation des étages d'accélération à poudre. They have burnt their propellant. We don't need them anymore, so we can lose them and jettison them, and we are losing weight. We've lost about three quarters of our weight in just over two minutes. That's the aim of the game. The lighter we are, the faster we go. So we're now burning the main stage, that big tank of cryogenic propellant there. The grey tank is powering us up into the sky. It burns for about nine minutes. Take a look at the top of the vehicle. On the right-hand side, the pointy nose, that's what we call the fairing. The satellites are inside it, and it's protecting them from the rigors of the launch, notably the acoustic vibrations at liftoff. It's very loud. And friction, de la because so far we've been traveling through the dense part of the atmosphere, but now we don't need the fairing anymore, because the atmosphere is so thin there's no friction. And you can see how it flexes as it falls. Bord sont normaux. That's called the breathing mode. It's all part of the plan. So the captain has switched off the seatbelt signs. And we can see Intelsat 33 for the first time. There it is, the solar panels, those blue sections. On the right-hand side, you can see. And the uh, round things are the reflectors. On the bottom of the screen, our altitude, 136 kilometers above the Earth. We've gone beyond what's often known as the Kármán line, named after the Hungarian-American aerospace La engineer, est nominal. Theodore von Kármán, who was working in the first half of the century, the last century. And the Kármán line is around about 100 kilometers above sea level. That's uh, about 62 miles. 
It's often thought of as the border without of space, and that's because at this altitude, the atmosphere is so thin that the air can no longer support flight with wings. So aeroplanes are out, rockets are in. It's where aeronautics ends and astronautics begins. We're looking here at the Galio tracking station. That's the tracking station at the Guiana Space Center. You can see the dot there just above it is uh, our, our launcher. Intelsat has launched two satellites already this year from the Guiana Space Center. Intelsat 29E lifted off in January on board an Ariane 5 and Intelsat 31 was launched in May. That's providing media services over Latin America. Our distance in the middle of the bottom of the screen is the distance from the pad. If you were to draw a straight line, nominale, il reste minutes de propulsion de l'EPC. He's telling us that we have three minutes of propulsion left on the main stage. So if you were to draw a line from the launch pad to the position of the launcher above our planet, it would be right now a distance of 753 kilometers. And on the bottom right hand of the screen, you can see our speed. We're traveling at 4.16 kilometers per second. Per second, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that's extremely fast, and we are going to be going faster. In fact, once you cross the Kármán line, you have to travel at the mind-boggling speed of 18,000 miles per hour. Les paramètres de bord sont normaux. La trajectoire est nominale. Il reste 2 minutes de propulsion de l'étage principal cryotechnique in order to stay up. He's telling us we've got two minutes left now on the main stage propulsion phase. We're looking at CGI images here, computer generated images. We're pretty well seeing what's happening in space. Basically, the experts calculate a very precise schedule of events based on extremely accurate predictions. They put all of that information into the computer and the images we see here are a simulation of those predictions. Acquisition de la télémesure lanceur par la station de Natal au Brésil. So we're picking up the signal now at the Natal tracking station. That's in Brazil. Can you see it there? Une minute de propulsion de l'EPC. One minute left of propulsion on the main stage. And we launch from the equator, the edge of the Amazon rainforest here at the Guiana Space Center. This was eight minutes and 20 seconds ago. It was a beautiful launch. And we have three launches here. A family of three bears, if you like, like Daddy Bear, Mummy Bear, and Baby Bear. Um, Ariane 5 is the big heavy lifter. Soyuz is Mummy Bear, the middle-sized lifter. And Vega is the baby of the family, taking our smaller satellites into low Earth orbit. The Vulcan engine is propelling the main stage. It's now switching off. Separation de l'étage principal cryotechnique. We have separation now of the main stage. It's uh, been jettisoned because it's Allumage burnt all its propellant. Étage supérieur cryotechnique. And we've switched on the engine of the upper stage. The final stage that is left now of our vehicle, you can see it, the white and grey disc. It's switched its engine on, and this is the beginning of the next phase now in our journey. The upper stage has taken the wheel. It's our taxi driver. 
Its job is to transport our satellites to their correct orbit so that we can start the process of releasing them.